Hello everyone, I'm Aka and welcome to my channel. If this is the first time we're meeting, hi, I'm Aka. I'm a 34-year-old single mom of two who lives in Osaka, Zambia. Now, in 2015, I got married and sadly, by 2019, the marriage had already ended. So in this video, I'm going to be telling you five lessons that I learned from my failed marriage. Number one is to rediscover yourself after marriage. As women, we have this tendency to put aside the things that make us happy, our hobbies, and our desires, our wishes, we put those aside and put our partner's needs, our family's needs in front of our own needs. And as a result, we sort of lose ourselves. So what I learned is that it's very important to rediscover who you are within the marriage. Find out what you like, what your interests are. Find out the things that make you happy, the things that give you joy. Because what I found personally was when my marriage ended, I found myself being totally lost. I had not only lost my husband, I had also lost myself. And that process of coming to the realization that I had lost myself was uh, not easy to come to terms with. It was very difficult. And the process of rediscovering myself was a long and arduous one. So I believe that it is better to constantly keep working on yourself, even while you're in a relationship and you're in a marriage, so that in case something like a failed marriage happens, you're not stuck in this state of just nothingness and have to face this really hard journey of rediscovering who you are. So after the end of my marriage, in my quest to rediscover myself, I found new interests, new hobbies, and one of them was photography. Another one was baking. And as a result of my finding those interests, I ended up building businesses out of those things and they provide me with an extra source of income. A shameless plug here, don't forget to go to my Instagram page and book your photography sessions. Okay, end of shameless plug. Another lesson I learned from my failed marriage is just how vitally important communication is. Communication is the bedrock of any successful relationship and not just in terms of romantic relationships, even in terms of platonic relationships or familial relationships. Communication is very, very important. You should be able to communicate your feelings, your wishes, your desires with the other person or your husband. In this case, I'm speaking from the perspective of a woman. So as a woman, you should be able to communicate to your husband and your feelings not be weaponized against you. That's very important. So if you find yourself having to defend yourself from your partner about how you feel, then that is an indication that something is not okay and maybe you need to sort of seek help from an outside source to try and help you guys find a more effective way to communicate. Another thing is that communication comes from both sides. So if your partner or your husband is not able to communicate back to you, that's another humongous red flag. Seek help, seek counseling and try to get that sorted because for as long as the communication is not effective, there are going to be problems and that might ultimately lead to the failure of what would have otherwise been a successful marriage. Another lesson I learned from my failed marriage is the importance of establishing healthy boundaries. So as women, we tend, I can only speak from a woman's perspective, that's the only lived experience I have. So as, a, as women, we tend to bend and move our boundaries, especially when we're in love, we kind of keep moving those boundaries Keep moving them in order to accommodate or to facilitate our partners and while that is convenient for our partners it's not good for us we need to have these solid boundaries where we say this i will not accept this i will not tolerate this i may be a little bit flexible on this i'm totally rigid and don't even bother trying to, to change my mindset on this subject it's very healthy for you to have those boundaries and for you to be able to communicate those boundaries to your partner so after my failed marriage, I realized just how important it was for me to redefine and reestablish my boundaries so that if I do decide to go into another relationship, I, am, I have the ability to communicate what those boundaries are and to set them out very clearly for my partner to know so that that way we don't end up having issues in the long run. Another lesson I learned from my failed marriage is the importance of independence and self-sufficiency. 
So I'm talking about independence and self-sufficiency in terms of finance, in terms of uh, personal independence, in terms of in terms of like emotional stability. You need to have those things. So in terms of finances, I realize that it's very important to have your own financial means to survive. No one goes into a marriage hoping that it fails. Of course not. So once a marriage fails, it's kind of a shock in all aspects of your life, emotionally, physically, financially. So it's important both in and out of a relationship to have financial independence, have your own source of income. So whether it be a form, formal employment or business or whatever it is, just have your own money. It's very important. Um, having financial independence also gives you a level of freedom that someone who doesn't have that financial independence may not have. So some people stay in abusive relationships because their partner is the person that is bringing in the money. So if they leave that person, then they're going to be stuck. They won't have any means to take care of themselves or if they're children, they won't be able to take care of those children. So they stay because of that. But when you have that financial independence, you're able to be able to walk out of that relationship and know that you'll be able to take care of yourself and your children. On the same point, in terms of emotional sufficiency, you cannot depend on your partner solely to meet your emotional needs. You should create for yourself a network of friends and family, uh, church elders, people who will be able to help you in case of a failed marriage. If your only emotional support was your husband and now the marriage ends, who is going to be there to help you, to bring you out of those dark times and those dark moments? So you need to surround yourself by other people who will be able to provide you with that emotional support that you need when you are in need of that emotional support. The final thing I learned from my failed marriage was just how important it is to heal and to grow. So after the end of the marriage, it takes a very long time for you to kind of process the fact that this relationship that you thought would last forever has ended. Uh, you have to grieve the loss of the relationship. You have to grieve the loss of the future that you hope to have with that person, the life that you dreamed you as a family would have. The, the sort of partner you wish, the sort of father you thought your children would have and just all those things. So it takes some time for you to grieve all those losses and to come to terms with the fact that this marriage has ended and you have to be able to support yourself and your children without this person that you expected to be there for you forever. So the process is long and should not be rushed. Allow yourself to feel the feelings. If you feel angry, feel angry. No one should tell you not to be angry. If you feel sad, feel sad. That's fine. I mean, something tragic happened and it's sad. You're allowed to feel sad. If you feel relieved, that's fine too. Some, Especially if you're in a marriage that was very toxic and just emotionally abusive, there's a certain sense of relief that comes with the end of a marriage. So on the one hand, you're sad that this marriage has died. But on the other hand, you're happy because you are free from that abuse and that toxic cycle. Also, it's important to seek help. Seek therapy if you have to. Personally, I know that my experience of marriage was just not a very good one. And I understand that I will probably have to seek therapy at some point in the future. I know that there are probably some scars that were created as a result of how the marriage ended and the fact that the marriage ended. So I'm not shy about saying that I probably need therapy. And if you feel like you need therapy, you should go and get that therapy. Don't let anyone make you feel any type of way. You're allowed to seek help. These are the five things that I learned from my failed marriage. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have found it useful or you just like to give me your two cents on what I just talked about, please feel free to comment in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to like the video if anything I've said in this video has resonated with you. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to all the new subscribers. Hi, welcome. We love you around here. Please feel at home. And don't also, if you have any ideas for topics that you'd like me to talk about, please feel free to leave those in the comment section below as well. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.